Hello guys, this is Universal Giant, and welcome back for more of Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. Off screen, I did a little bit of grinding to bring Lupus up to level 10. At level 9, he was prompted to learn Smog, poison type move, base 20 power, 70% accurate. Not better than anything he's got right now. I also went to the Pokemart to sell off some of her battle items. I picked up some potions, some Pokeballs. Nothing to write home about, really. Great Balls have a better catch rate than Pokeballs. Indeed, they do. And as this fellow tells us, if we get more gym badges, the Mart will start selling better stuff. So all the more reason for us to head to the south part of Azalea Town and take on the gym! A walking bug Pokemon encyclopedia. Doesn't that just make you want to beat him up? Bugs don't like fire. And flying type moves are effective too. So are rock type moves. It's a shame we don't have any of them on our team. But Bugsy's gym has gotten a complete makeover. Now the idea with these things is that the spiders will walk you across, but they will always take the longest path in front of them. In this case, it brings us straight into a bug catcher. Bug catcher? Bug catcher! Both Pokemon have no charm, that's why no one likes them, except maybe you. Now, if I didn't mention it earlier, Caterpie is the counterpart of Weedle in the Silver games, where in Silver you'll find Weedle, Kakuna, and occasionally Beedrill if you look in the right places. In the Gold versions, you'll find Caterpie, Metapod, and Butterfree. Speaking of Weedle... But yeah, this is why I decided to get Lupus the extra couple of levels, because it'll really help him out in this gen. And hopefully by the end, he'll be just about up to the same level as everybody else. That's what I'm going to try to do throughout this entire project. Because I realize now, if I just go in without trying to do a little bit of off-screen leveling, it's just not going to end very well for me. So let's think about this carefully. I want to make sure that I'm taking the right spider here. As we see, this one will cross three times. But I'd like to keep everybody about the same level, and that should give me all of the extra training that I need to be ready for the end of the game. It also helps keep the team a little bit more balanced so everybody gets about the same amount of screen time. That may not happen because some Pokemon develop take a lot more time to develop than others, and won't be nearly as useful in the beginning. But I'll try to avoid that as much as possible and use everybody evenly. Now, Kakuna, unlike the ones we'll find in the wild here, I believe if it's raised by a trainer, it will occasionally have the moves that Weedle would know, because it's the evolved form of Weedle, like Poison Sting, so it may actually attack us. Unfortunately, it's not fast enough, and even if it was, it wouldn't be doing much to us anyway, so... No big deal. Now, Beedrill, the evolved form of Kakuna. Bug-type Pokémon evolve fairly quickly, that's their thing. Beedrill is the evolved form of Kakuna. It's fairly quick and fairly powerful for this point in the game. Hoping Fury Attack doesn't do too many attacks. It can hit two to five times. I don't think Ember will be enough to take it out, though. Nope. I'm afraid to try a Fire Fang, because it looks like Ember will do the trick. But since it hits two to five times, each time it hits, it has a chance to crit. Now, if this doesn't knock it out, I think I might have to switch just to save Lupus. He's fine. Good going, Lupus! You beat up a Beedrill! Look at all that experience! Look at it! Good going, Lupus. So let's heal him up real quick. You can see I bought a couple of more potions just for this occasion. And Togepi is still hanging around our roster. I don't really know what else to do with him. Now let's see. This one should take us straight over to the twins in the top left corner there. Who else do I want fighting alongside Lupus? Crunch will do just fine. 
Now something introduced in the third generation is that you can fight more than one trainer at once. In this case, we're going to be fighting two. And I believe this is our first instance of a double battle. Now unlike single battles, you have to send out two Pokémon at a time! Now really the biggest difference here, just if you're playing without really any sort of special... I don't know where I'm going with this. The point is, really the only difference between single battles is if you have the shift option on, you won't be able to shift out if you knock out one of your opponent's Pokémon. So if the trainer that was holding that Spinarak over there lost her Pokémon and had someone else to switch in, we wouldn't have the option to switch out and change our Pokémon between rounds. So double and in the fifth generation triple battles are always set battles, you can't shift out. As far as I know, that's really the only difference. Aside from, you have to take into account that you have another Pokémon on the field as well. So if you use a move that affects every Pokémon on the field, like Surf, later on in the game, that'll also hit your Pokémon as well as hitting both of theirs. So you have to be mindful of moves that hit more than just one of the opponent's Pokémon at a time. It's a good thing Ladybug is really, really weak and can't do much of anything to me. Otherwise, that might have hurt. Unfortunately, Lupus is apparently... Wow, you're strong, Lupus. Look how much he's beaten himself up. Yeah, I'd say Lupus is the one feeling a bit dizzy. Look how much he made him beat himself up. I think two potions should do the trick, though. Or maybe one. Eh, I'm really stingy. Sorry, Lupus. Let's see where this one takes us. To the red string! And this one will take us straight to the gym leader. I'm not sure I want to go there quite yet. Hmm. How do I get to the other trainer in the top right-hand corner from here? Let's try switching things around and see if we can get something to work. Because I want to face off against that guy to the right of me. Because if we beat the gym leader without going over to him, we don't get to face him again, and darn it, I want that experience. Because Lupus could certainly use it. There we go. Hi, buddy. Do you feel special that I went all the way out of my way to see you? Hey, you knew I saved the Slowpoke! That's a really nice touch game. I thought these guys were just locked up in the gym forever and didn't notice anything. Paris! A rare grasp bug type. Quad weak to fire. Good luck with that. And with that, we should be about ready to take on the gym leader. So, what I'm going to do is head back outside and heal these guys up. Once I do that, we'll be ready to face off against Bugsy. So, I'll meet you guys back at Bugsy, fully healed up. Now that everybody's all healed up, it's time to take on Bugsy. Now, Bugsy, unlike most of the other gym leaders, will lead off with his strongest Pokémon, Scyther. And Scyther is known for using a particular move that it didn't use this time for some reason. I was actually hoping he would so I could show it off, and maybe if he struck me he'd get paralyzed, but... I guess that wasn't going to happen. What Scyther likes to do... is use Bugsy's trademark move, U-Turn which not only hits for, I believe, 70 base power, but it also allows the user to come back to its trainer and switch Pokémon in the middle of the turn. Now, I was hoping to catch him off guard and maybe paralyze him with static when he used it on Sleepy, but apparently he decided not to use it for some reason. 
and I'm pretty sure his other two Pokémon don't know U-Turn. So, it's unfortunate that's the second gym leader in a row that didn't get to use his signature move. I'm really hoping that's a trend, though, because a lot of those signature moves are a pain in the butt to deal with. Metapod, the evolved form of Caterpie. I don't know if we've seen one yet. But it's no threat to Lupus. Or should I say, Lupus is a threat to Metapod. Was that in bad taste? I really hope not. But yeah, his other two Pokémon, Metapod and Kakuna, not really anything to deal with. Worry about. Bug Pokémon are not tough. They burn to a cinder when hit with a fire type mode. Now, I've been hit with Poison Sting twice while training, both times it poisoned me on contact. I'm actually surprised that one didn't. But Lupus is gonna gain another level from this! I was really anticipating a lot more trouble from the Scyther, but... That's the second of the Gym Leader's main Pokémon that I was able to avoid their main attack with a critical hit. I am really having some good luck in this LP, let me tell you. And with that, we get our second badge! The Hive Badge. With it, now Pokémon up to level 30 will obey us, even if we receive them in a trade. And now we can use the HM Cut outside of battle, which we will be getting fairly shortly. And he also gives us TM89 for the signature move we did not get to see. U-turn. This is a very good attack, especially in competitive battling if you need to get out of the bad spot and still damage the other guy. Unfortunately, none of my guys will be able to learn U-turn. Yeah, 70 base power. Really nice move if you know how to use it. I'd actually recommend it at certain points in the game. I should have clicked the blue switch over there. Bug-type moves are... I mean, when gold and silver were around, bugs were really, really weak, and it was difficult to find a powerful enough bug move to actually counteract the psychic types that are weak to it. I mean, it's also strong against grass types, but come on, you, there's so many other things to use against grass Pokémon, you don't necessarily need bug. I think that's what the 5th generation did really well, introducing a lot more Pokémon that were strong enough to bolster the types that didn't necessarily have strong Pokémon to their names. So I'll go heal these guys up, and be right back. Now that everybody's all healed up and ready to go, it's time to head in the only direction we can. Now, I warn you, if you just beat the Slowpoke well, and aren't up for a challenge, don't continue going to the left here, because this, you'll activate this, even before you go into the gym. It's Snicker again. Rival battle number two. Now you'll notice, since the last time we met this guy, he's picked up two more Pokémon. The first one? Ghastly, Ghost Poison type. Weak to Dark! Now, most ghost Pokémon are known for a particular move called Curse, which cuts half of the user's max HP at the expense of laying a curse on the opposing Pokémon, which cuts a quarter of their HP at the end of every turn. It's like a stronger version of Poison. Except it doesn't have any visible effect until the end of the turn. Which is why it's probably a good idea for me to switch Lupus out of here at this point. His next Pokémon is Zubat, the weak thing we've been running into for a very long time. But in the second generation, its evolution actually got another evolution, which is a very, very good Pokémon that I've always wanted to try, but I haven't really found a good team that it would work on, so I'm still kind of waiting for the opportunity to use one of those properly. And if I didn't mention before, Confusion is one of those status ailments that doesn't pop up on screen visibly. Whereas Poison, Paralysis, Sleep, 
they'll appear underneath the name of the Pokémon that the status is inflicted on, but for some reason Confusion doesn't do that. Now we'll see his starter Pokémon has evolved as well. I, You know what, I think I want to get that thing paralyzed first. His Chikorita has evolved into Bayleaf. Now, regardless of what starter you picked, the starter that he picked will always be its second form at this point. Hence why Chikorita's evolved. Now, this thing is actually a defensive monster, which is why I wanted to make sure it was paralyzed. It might have been a better idea to burn it, but I can't trust Lupus to get the burn on either... Fire Fang or Ember, so I just wanted to cripple this thing at least somewhat before I switched him in. Now Reflect is one of the moves that will raise the defense of your side of the field for five turns. In this case, Ember... Reflect raises physical defense, so if we tried to hit this thing with a physical attack, it would do half of the damage it normally does. But besides that, Bayleaf can't really do too much to us. That was a very timely critical hit, because if he didn't use Synthesis, we would have had him on robes. Now, I really think I want to take a turn to get rid of the... Well, I'd get rid of the poison, but he just inflicted on me again. Maybe I'll get lucky with another crit. At this point, you have to hope for a crit, because this thing is going to take forever to go down. That's what defensive walls are all about. They like to inflict you with status ailments and then just sit there and take hits until you die. Very annoying to deal with, especially considering the fact that the only super effective move I have is on a Pokémon that's five levels under him. Now, Razor Leaf is a grass move that has a high critical hit ratio. So if at any point I get a critical... Hit. Oh, jeez. I'm in a really bad spot here. Because if he hits me with Razor Leaf again, regardless of whether or not it crits, Lupus is going to die. Jeez. I need Lupus to stay alive. Above everything else, I need Lupus to stay alive. Because if he goes down, all of a sudden I can't hit Bailey for super effective damage. And if I can't do that... That thing's just going to sit there and tank all of my hits until I'm dead. So as much as I don't want to sack a Pokémon at this point, I really need to heal up Lupus. Sorry, Sleepy. And I'd like to get the poison off of him as well. Uh, this is the only reason I have Togepi. I hate to say it, but Togepi isn't going to be anything more for me than Switch Fodder. I'm sorry if anybody really likes Togepi. But that's the only reason I encourage holding a full roster of six Pokémon at any time. In case you need Switch Fodder like this, so you can take a turn or two to heal, it's better than nothing. That's why I'm still holding on to Geodude as well. You haven't gotten fully paralyzed once yet, have you, Bayleaf? Part of the effects of paralysis is that you're unable to move 25% of the time. How about that kicking in for once? No. Thanks, game. Make a battle take three times as long as it should. Just because I decided to pick the starter who is weak to the defensive wall of the three. There we go! Full paralysis! You can't do a thing. Now if we get just one more of those, we're set. Otherwise he'll get off the synthesis and we'll have to repeat the process all over again. Or you can be stupid and use reflect despite the fact that I'm using a special attack. And that's not going to exactly help you. Hooray! That only took... I should have timed it. My god, that took a long time. But since Flaffy and Togepi were both knocked out, Lupus hogs all of the experience, and now he's just about caught up with everybody else. Now he has the option to learn Roar. I'm not going to learn this, but what it does is 
it's a lower priority move, so it will almost always go last. But it will roar out your opponent's Pokemon into another one at random, or if you're in a wild battle, it'll scare them off, so the wild encounter will end. It's like running away, except it takes a turn. It's good to use if you know how to use it, but for the sake of the normal game, it's a little too situational for my taste. Guy really hates Team Rocket, doesn't he? You feeling okay, Houndour? You took quite a beating in that battle. Now, I don't know if I showed this off, but if, you're, if your Pokémon is poisoned and you're walking around the overworld every five steps or so, he'll take an HP of damage. But if you do it for long enough and his HP is reduced to one, unlike third generation and prior, if we run around for long enough, they'll survive the poisoning with one HP and not be knocked out on the overall. Very nice. But I think we've had enough of an adventure for one day. In the next episode, we'll head through the Ilex Forest and see what it has to offer. Until then, this is Universal Giant. And Lupus is about to fall over. I really think we should get him healed up. So I'll see you guys out here next time.